Outside of Russia and a few Turkic language speaking countries, not many people are familiar with Bashkortostan, but this could soon change. There's increasing speculation that a defeat for Vladimir Putin in Ukraine could lead to dramatic political change at home, and the colonial structure that modern Russia inherited from the Soviet Union and the Russian Empire could start to unravel. If this happens, expect to hear a lot about Bashkortostan. It's the largest republic in the Russian Federation by population, and one of the most economically developed regions in the country. And its opposition movement, operating both domestically and in exile, increasingly views independence, not just greater autonomy, as the best option for the people of Bashkortostan. Why? Here's the story. Bashkortostan is home to the Bashkirs, a Turkic language speaking people who first arrived in the area over a thousand years ago and were incorporated into the Russian Empire in the 1500s. Today, just over 4 million people live in Bashkortostan. Most of the population is made up of Bashkirs, Tatars, and other ethnic groups from around the South Ural Mountains. A little over a third of the population is ethnically Russian. After centuries of Russian rule, the Bashkir people began seeking autonomy after the February 1917 revolution. Several prominent nationalists, including Bashkir hero Ametzeki Velidi Togan, declared the autonomy of Bashkiria in November 1917. Also known to history as Bashkortostan's First Republic, this fledgling state lasted for only a year and a half, but it was still a critical moment in the development of Bashkortostan's political identity, which resonates still today. Soon after the Bolsheviks seized power, Bashkortostan was officially incorporated into the new Russian Soviet Federation as the Bashkir Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic, an entity Bashkirs now refer to as the Second Republic. Despite the name, the Bashkir ASSR didn't have any genuine autonomy. After all, the Soviet Union was a communist dictatorship. By the 1980s, however, Moscow's grip on the regions had begun to slip, and led by Murtaza Rakhimov, Bashkortostan made another bid for meaningful autonomy. Many other regions did the same thing at this time, including neighboring Tatarstan. So many that this era is now referred to as the Parade of Sovereignties. But it was in Bashkortostan where a particularly iconic moment took place. In the summer of 1990, Boris Yeltsin, only recently elected leader of the Russian Republic, still part of the Soviet Union, visited Ufa, Bashkortostan's capital city. Addressing a large crowd, he said, We say to the Bashkir people, take as much sovereignty as you can swallow. Following Yeltsin's advice, Bashkortostan issued a declaration of sovereignty a few months later, claiming local control over its legal and judicial system and reserving the republic's vast natural resources for the people of Bashkortostan. Shortly afterwards, the Bashkir ASSR entered into a federal treaty with Moscow, designed a new flag, and renamed itself the Republic of Bashkortostan, also known as the Third Republic. For a few short years, the Republic of Bashkortostan maintained some autonomy, but when Vladimir Putin became president, the tide turned the other way, and today Bashkortostan has practically no local autonomy whatsoever. In 2014, Bashkir activists created a new national youth movement called Bashkort. It campaigned for preservation of the Bashkir language and protection of the local environment. Bashkort grew quickly, and at its peak it had several thousand members across 18 branches. Its most famous campaign began in 2020. Mount Kushtau, one of four isolated chalk mountains considered sacred to the Bashkir people, had been slated for destruction by one of Russia's largest chemical companies. After an extensive campaign of civil disobedience, which included forming a human chain to block access by mining equipment, the mountain was saved, but at a price. Bashkort has been formally banned as an extremist organization, and its former leader, Ruslan Gabasov, is now in exile, where he heads the Bashkir National Political Center, or Bashnatpolit. After a century of failed attempts to gain autonomy within Russia, Bashkir leaders like Gabasov have increasingly begun calling for outright independence, something referred to as the Fourth Republic of Bashkortostan. Putin's decision to launch a full-scale invasion of Ukraine has only made these calls louder. Bashkortostan has a proud military history that stretches back centuries, and Bashkir soldiers are once again being sent into battle under orders from Moscow. This is naturally stoking resentment. As Gabasov explained in an October interview, the Ukrainians haven't done anything bad to us, but the empire has always crushed us. They crushed our Bashkir language, they imprisoned our leaders. Why should we fight for them now? 
instead of fighting for Russia, some residents of Bashkortostan have started to fight against it. In recent months, an organization calling itself the Committee of the Bashkir Resistance has taken credit for acts of arson and sabotage aimed at hampering Russia's war effort. One took place only a few days ago. This group is not connected to other Bashkir nationalist groups, and its claims are not possible to verify. But it is clear that, in Bashkortostan, discontent with the war is growing. Can Bashkortostan possibly become independent? It might seem like a long shot at this point. But remember, this is just one independence movement among many across the Volga region. A wider, coordinated move for independence could be much harder for Moscow to stop once it gets underway. According to Gabasov, support for full independence in Bashkortostan is growing. If Russia loses the war, he has no doubt that the movement will grow a hundred times larger. And if that happens, expect to start hearing a lot about Bashkortostan.